Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. What's your email address? No, I'm just kidding. Don't give it to me. Uh, but I will ask you what you do to stop spam from reaching your email address, if anything, or what you do to defeat spam. I'm curious to know. I've got my own little workflow here. I still share my email address freely, chris at perillo.com. I have for years. Uh, I'm, not, I'm just not going to change it. I know some people change their email address every year, and they have a, an interesting convention uh, the way they do it. Everybody does things differently. Um, there are things that you can do, especially if you are active online, and then you do have an email address if that's the case. Uh, but if you ever built your own site or had the opportunity to be involved with uh, some kind of site building where your email address may uh, be integrated, uh, some kind of contact information, there are things you want to keep in mind. And I've got a top five list uh, submitted by Zachary, and uh, this is specifically for web developers, but I think it's, it's good information for everybody out there. The first thing he recommends is finding a good application, a good program for managing junk email. If your mail provider does a good enough job, great. However, there's always going to be false positives that are, that are going to come through um, in, a, in a bad way, that is. Uh, I've now uh, taken to using a server-side solution as well as a desktop solution. I'm relying on Microsoft Outlook on the desktop, and it's absolutely ghastly. Thank goodness my server-side uh, spam filter does a pretty good job, catches most of the junk before it gets through uh, to my desktop, at least. I'm in an exchange environment, so it's a little different than the average uh, setup uh, if you're using IMAP or, or POP3 for your email. Um, either way, you have to use something, and you have to be comfortable with it, and hopefully it's good. And that's where I asked you at the beginning of this video, what do you use? Number two, never give your email away in text form. Now, I sit here and I say chris at perillo.com. That's not text. I mean, you could write it down, you can type it in, and then it could be made into text. But if you can avoid putting it in text and then uploading that to the web somewhere, on the web, uh, anywhere on a web page, anywhere, uh, because that's potentially dangerous. Uh, that's how these bots will come by. They'll scrape and they'll look, oh, there's an email address. I'm going to take that, yoink, I'm going to put it in this uh, database of 60 million email addresses, and then I'll, I'm, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to sell it to someone who wants to spam those email addresses. That's how it works, man. It's a, it's totally a numbers game. Totally a numbers game. Uh, if you can, if at all possible, avoid doing that. Uh, some people have taken to just, you know, writing out the email saying something fancy like Chris at symbol uh, something, something, something dot something, something. I mean, they obscure it so that a human being could figure out what was going on, but a machine wouldn't be able to figure it out at least a, a machine that was designed to scrape uh, the just easy pickings. Some people uh, put their uh, email address in an image, which isn't always the best uh, because now uh, software can be written so that it recognizes images and can interpret. It's, it's OCR. Uh, it, it can be done with an image. Uh, some people have taken, though, to putting their email address, at least a link to or the visibility in a flash file, which apparently is, is less likely to be uh, scraped and, and spidered and sucked and just abused at, at any point in the future. Um, just keep from you know, direct linking to it if you can at all possible. And if, if you do put it in an image, still, you want to mess with it. You don't want anybody to, to just take that ball and run with it, at least with ease. Number three, if you're a company, split up the billing department, etc., etc., into various email aliases. For instance, help and support at yourcompany.com or the billing department at yourcompany.com makes it easier to destroy spam that uh, eludes filters and it's better for organizational purposes as well. Uh, that's very true. And you notice how he, he wrote here specifically help and support or the billing department. And the reason why is uh, on his fourth tip, he mentions try not to use common words like help at your company, billing at your company, because sometimes. All these uh, spam software, uh, what would you call them? I mean, jerks. Uh, they'll, they'll just guess at dictionary terms uh, and assume that that's what you're using. So if you use a, an alias or a word that isn't in the dictionary, as in help and support at yourcompany.com, uh, it's going to be less likely to just be guessed at and then spammed randomly. Uh, and then number five, the last tip is for everybody. 
no matter you, how you use it or how you do this, uh, make two accounts for yourself, business and personal. Give out personal to family members and close friends. Business will probably still be spammed. You never really know. Um, you, you just do what you can to protect that email address. And I, I realize I'm a really bad example of you know, sharing my email address, which, of course, Zachary used to email me the top five list. My email, again, is chris at perillo.com. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's never going to go away. I mean, there's always going to be uh, people out there that game the system. I think uh, it should be an offense that's punishable by, if you're caught spamming, I think you should be uh, kicked off the internet for the rest of your life. I realize it's kind of harsh, but that's my platform. That's just what I say. I'm not going to go as far as the death penalty. I mean, certainly there are a few that have pushed my buttons close to it. But uh, I, I would say the, uh, uh, the only way is just kick them off uh, the internet. Period. End of story. Trust me, I can almost guarantee that uh, the, the amount of junk that comes through will, will decrease once people uh, realize that they need to be responsible netizens. Uh, I think it, it's, it's going to be a, a huge deal when identity comes tied into these systems. There is no identity on the internet, absolutely none. It's all anon, uh, potentially anon, and that's the beauty of it, but it also is what makes for all this exploitation. Um, I'm going to leave it again with that initial question, what do you do to stop spam? Um, do you remember the day when there was no such thing as spam on the internet? Um, and most importantly, do you know why we call it spam? Does anybody? Anybody know? Does anybody? Can anybody tell me right now? I don't think anybody could. I, I know where it came from. I know because I happen to be a Monty Python fan. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, now, if you want to join us in the chat room, you're welcome to do so, so long as you don't come in and spam your link. Uh, you know, you can come in and not be a spammer, just be a, an active member of the community at large. Uh, these are the chatters down here below me, at least virtually. And we're typically talking tech, uh, solutions, questions, answers, hardware, software, internet. I mean, we it runs the gamut, really. Uh, sometimes we even talk about how to stop uh, these bad people from doing bad and evil things. I don't know if I'd consider spam a, a security issue so much, but certainly the topic of internet security comes about when we talk about junk email. Uh, anyway, you're welcome to stop by, uh, and even if I'm not here in front of the desk or chatting away inside the chat room, other people certainly are, hundreds of them, and uh, you're welcome to join us anytime, day or night. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.